this video today is about an introduction to coincidence of actus reus and mens rea. So I'd like you to have a look at the following scenario and think about should Alan be held liable for in criminal law for Dennis's injuries. So the scenario is this. Alan was reversing his lorry into a narrow entrance to park against a wall. He suddenly heard people standing on the pavement shouting stop. Alan immediately stopped and looked to see what the fuss was about. He found out that he'd trapped Dennis against the wall. When he saw that it was Dennis, he shouted, I hate you, you can stay there. And he kept Dennis trapped against the wall for several minutes and then drove off. As a result, Dennis suffered a fractured spine. So the question again was, should Alan be held responsible in criminal law for Dennis's injuries? Well, hopefully your sense of fairness should say, well, yes. Even though at the time that he commits the initial act, so driving up against him and crushing him against the wall, Alan doesn't realise what has happened, he is responsible for the injuries to Dennis. So this is a concept called the coincidence of actus reus and mens rea. In criminal law, the defendant must have the mens rea at the same time as the actus reus, so the two must coincide. And usually we're talking about the same instant in time. So I decide I'm angry with my friend and I'm going to throw something at them. My actus reus is the action of throwing something at them. And I have the mens rea, the intention, it's my aim or purpose to do so. And they happen in exactly the same instant. But where the actus reus involves a continuing act, a later mens rea during the act can satisfy this rule. And this can also be known as a chain of events, starting a chain of events. And the courts are prepared to elongate the idea of an event, of an instant, to ensure that people who commit offences will still be liable, even if the offence isn't committed quite in the way that they had intended or even if to start with that wasn't what they wanted, but later on it was. So when you're looking at coincidence of actus reus and mens rea in a scenario, what you're likely to see is something has happened by mistake, but they're quite pleased about it. So you'll see how this works in two different cases. So what I'd like you to do is I've given you some pictorial clues that will help you make sure that you've identified the right case. So the first one is Fagan and the Metropolitan Police Commissioner. So what you have there, you have a police officer, a car and a foot. I'd also like you to research the case of Thabo Melli. Now your teacher might pronounce this Tabo Melli. I really don't mind. As long as you spell it like that, you can pronounce it however you like. And the picture you have got there is a cliff, a very big, very exposed cliff face. So I'd like you to go back and spend some time researching the case of Fagin and the case of Thabo Melli and meet me back here in a moment. So I'm hoping that you've gone away, you've researched the cases, you've found out exactly what they're about and you are going to use this as an opportunity to confirm your understanding. Or maybe you've just let the video play and you're going to wait for me to tell you the answer, which I will. So his appeal was rejected. Driving the car onto the constable's foot and then leaving it there was one continuous act. He was liable as long as he had the necessary mens rea at some stage during that continuing act, which he clearly did when he chose to leave the officer there.
And the court said his actus reus is when he drives onto the police officer's foot. The mens rea is when he decided to allow the officer to, to stay there. Even though they didn't happen in the same instant, they happen in the same chain of events and therefore he is still liable. So hopefully you see what I mean now about something which was initially an accident, but they then develop the mens rea and it becomes a criminal offence. Now the Fagan scenario is a uh, situation is likely what you would see in a scenario question in your exam. The other way that this concept can happen is seen in the case of Thabo Meli. So Thabo Meli and his friends took their victim to a small hut and beat him over the head intending to kill him. Thinking that they succeeded, they rolled his body over the cliff to make the death appear accidental. In fact, the victim survived both the beating and the rolling, but he died from exposure having been pushed off the cliff, he's injured, he's exposed to the elements, and dies shortly afterwards. And Thabo Meli and the others were convicted of murder. The Privy Council dismissed the appeal that the defendants made, saying, where the actus reus consists of a series of linked acts, it is enough that the mens rea existed at some time during that series, even if not necessarily at the time of the particular act which caused the death. So, in Thabo Meli, they have the mens rea when they beat up the victim, intending to kill him, leading them to believe that he's dead. And they have the actus reus when they throw him off the cliff and he dies of the exposure. So although the actus reus and mens rea doesn't happen in the same instant, it does happen in the same chain of events. So that's your introduction. You can now spend a moment making your flashcard so that you've got something to revise from. Rewind the video if you need to and remind yourself of the facts of the case. Uh, you should be looking at half a page as an absolute max on this concept. And you should now be able to answer the following question. So for EDUCAS, it's around about a six marker, which would be eight minutes work. And the question is, outline the law of coincidence of actus reus and mens rea. So you'd need to define it and you would need to use cases to back up what you've said. So let's finally look back at that scenario that we started with at the start of this video and I've adjusted the question to the way that it appeared in the actual exam. So discuss the principle of coincidence of actus reus and mens rea in respect of Dennis's injuries. And you remember that the situation was this. Alan was reversing his lorry into a narrow entrance to park against a wall. He suddenly heard people standing on the pavement shouting stop. Alan stopped immediately and looked to see what the fuss was about. He found that he had trapped Dennis against the wall. When he saw that it was Dennis, he shouted, I hate you, you can stay there. And he kept Dennis trapped against the wall for several minutes and then drove off. As a result, Dennis suffered a fractured spine. So as you can see, it's just like the case of Fagin. So Alan's actus reus takes place when he crushes Dennis against the wall.